All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Nerds of Legend. I'm your Dungeon Master, Ben. Next to me is Brian. Next to him is... Uh... Wow, wow Will. Will. <laughs> Below me is Joel. And then next to him is Brendan. Uh, Are you coming back around? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Sorry about that, Will. I think you just I, wanted to I, say, I, Below me, Joel, in that phrase. <laughs> Uh, in, sorry, case you're wondering, in case you're wondering who's going to die this session. <laughs> I'm writing you off already. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, just a couple of housekeeping things right at the top of the episode. Uh, reminder to everybody, our next book talk. Uh, we're not going to do it on a Monday, since that is Halloween. We're going to do it on Tuesday at, the, at our normal time. And we will be talking about Foundations by Isaac Asimov. Uh, so, and then after following that, we've got a normal D&D, and then panicking. on the following Saturday, we're going to be doing a very special stream where we will go be playing, doing a long session where we will play, uh, Call of Cthulhu with original GM. We're all very excited for that. So, uh, stay tuned. Are we, for do more. we have to wear costumes? I need to know what Brian is. Uh, Brian we're expecting. supposed to wear costumes. Yeah, I've already told you you're supposed to wear a costume. Oh, that's right. It's a kid's one. Okay. Yeah. For some reason, I, I mixed that up. Yes, I have my costume. Yes. Excellent. Yep. Uh, so uh, that's now that that business is out of the way, uh, let's get right down to it. So last week, our, tree, our group met a skeletal knight that challenged them, referring to a she that said he'd find them there. They immediately whomped him and moved on after noting the mushrooms that sprouted from his wounds. They reached the chalet Brantifax, and where they, they encountered a no number of so sourceless noises from children's laughter to oinking pigs and creaking doors. Uh, they didn't find any s signs of life in the main floor other than s obvious cooking in the kitchen. They, As they moved further up, they found further notes that it had been recently habitated. And then, after which, they found a diary from the Lady Brantifax, who used to live in, in the chalet. Uh, this diary spoke of a mysterious end of various members of the house and her plans to leave as she had heard, started to hear noises and believing the house to be haunted. They discovered a nursery where they encountered a poltergeist, and they defeated it after being thrown all around the room, and that's where they are now. So... And you guys, uh, you just defeated the poltergeist, presumably of one of the little girls that died in the house. Um, you got your kind of got thrown around a bit, and that's where you're at now. So, what do you guys want to do? Let's look at the map of the chalet. Oh, if you if you have that available, <laughs> that that's, that would be that'd be a good thing to bring up, wouldn't it? <laughs> I was looking at it and I was like, "What do you mean? It's right here." <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're up there on the third floor. Do we still hear any of the creaking and the wind howling and that sort of thing? Uh, not currently. So it's considerably less haunted feeling for now. Until we find something else. <laughs> Um, is there, do we have a general idea of, of the room before the encounter began or, or is it actually, um, full of enough stuff that we, we could bother searching it? Uh, you guys pretty much found it, uh, everything in that room. Uh, the, the only thing was that nothing was going on until, uh, Joel touched or, uh, Murph touched one of the dolls and got f tossed into the ceiling, but, <laughs> uh, that's about it. Sam Raimi style. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> so. Other than that, it's pretty much just like a normal nursery all bit with a lot of cobwebs and dust and stuff and signs, obvious signs that a fight just happened. So. I briefly check in the fireplace. Uh, sure. Wait, I think I did that. La no, you I did, did that, that last, last game. time. Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely did that last time. <laughs> Never. I, I I retract my um, circular logic. Yeah, from what you can see, there's there isn't really anything of note left in this room. 
We want to double back down the stairs, guys. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm confident that we have seen everything, so we can go. All right. You'll go back down to the second floor. So if you remember last time, you guys searched this room, which is where you found the diary. Uh, it was the first thing you did after coming up the stairs. You didn't really check anything else out. Um, as you guys enter into the this floor, though, um, and you're back down in C12, uh, you hear the, like, coming from what sounds like down the hallway. Investigate that. Sure. Mm. <laughs> so, so that's, like, the bottom left. Yeah. Now the bump center. Okay. So it sounds like it came from over this area. Uh, if nobody stops him, then uh, Gideon is going to take a left and start heading towards C13. Oh. Or uh, actually, I'm sorry, he would continue all the way down uh, further to C14 before anything else. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So, as you are going down this hallway, you actually hear some whispered noise, whispers coming from from this room. Uh, Can I use eyes of the grave? I mean, you haven't. Sure, you can. Okay. Um, then I would like to look around. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I know the un location of any undead within 60 feet that isn't buying total cover and isn't protected from magic. Yeah, so are you just still in the hallway? No, I'm in the room. You just barged into C-14? Well, I'm looking into the room. Well, the door's I didn't, closed. I like, the door. The door's closed. You just hear whispers coming from the other side. Oh, I thought my fault. I want to use it when we go in there. Then I, I thought we had already gone in it. My, fa my, my fault. Okay. I was still organizing my sheet. So, uh, yeah. So you're not. You're just gonna go right in. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna activate it, and I'm gonna activate Eyes of the Grave and go. Uh, and what can Eyes of the Grave do? I'm gonna do it undead, right? I'd like to do it as stealthily as possible. Okay. Uh, so you can, you can like look through a keyhole or whatever if you want, if you don't want to just go right in. Either or. Okay. Whatever you want. So, uh, Murph looks through the, the keyhole and you can see four figures, uh, they're in robes and sandals with, uh, scarlet sashes. Uh, they're, they're sort of huddled up talking about... Uh, give me a perception check. Uh, a 19. Okay. Yeah, so you can hear that, uh, they're, you can hear the four figures, uh, uh, discussing, you can help, the, one of them's holding, like, a figurine, of some kind, and they're discussing what to do with it. So you can hear they're like, well, we're going to have to hide this somewhere. I don't know what to do with it. Um, do, do I know they're, un they're ghosts or undead, or are they actually people? They're not undead. If you used your eyes... Yeah, you, you mentioned you said you used the eyes of the grave. They're, they're not undead. They're okay, people. are they ghosts? Because I would know that too. That would be undead. Oh, look at you using fancy words. Okay, well, I'm going to relay to the group. I'm like, there, there's four people in there. And, and and they're talking about a statue. I'm going to say it. I'm going to whisper it, but I'm not. So you can hear it through the microphone. Yeah. Um. Um, can I... Do I know what the statue is? 
Uh, give me a perception check to see if you can actually like make anything out of it first. Fourteen. Okay. Um, yeah, all you can tell is it looks like it's some kind of figurine. You're, you, you're looking through a keyhole. You can't tell that much from it. Obviously, if you entered the room, you would have some kind of idea. But Okay. All right, well then, uh, I'm going to move back, and I'm going to tell them that they can... I'm like, they're not undead. I'm like, I'm, I'm, they're, 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 they, they're not ghosts. They look like actual people, and there are four of them. Take a look. And I will point, uh, you know, tell any of them, move out the way so somebody else can take a look. You know what the door's locked? I didn't, I didn't try it. I think I'll check with my lockpicks. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just reading something. Okay, so, um, yeah, so as you bend down and start, like, messing with the door lock, uh, Brendan, uh, the door's just going to open, and you see a, you see a woman standing there. She's like, can we help you? Well, it uh, looks like this lock's in order. I guess we don't have to report any building violations here. <laughs> what brings you people here? Oh, well, just look at this place. It's destitute. The windows are broken. You're howling through the shutters. We have half a mind to report all these violations. So you're building inspectors that are went to a chalet in the middle of nowhere far off the beaten half path from any sort of village just to check out this building. Racked. A bird told us to come. We're exceptionally thorough. A bird. Yeah. Bird. And she's going to look back at, at her a bird? What kind of bird? I mean, no, it wasn't. It's the build. We're building inspectors. Yes. It's the bird was metaphorical. Like, you know, a bird told me. Yes. What kind of bird? A raven. Raven told us. A metaphorical raven told us by giving us a book. I see. It could be any bird, really. It's really just, you know. No, it was a raven. I remember. I remember clearly it was a raven. She's going to she's going to like look <laughs> back at her three companions. And, uh, she's going to say, hmm. But he's quite right. Your building is in shambles. And it's yes. haunted. Which and one? it's haunted. You're a ghost. That's undeniable. Uh, we, I assure you we're not ghosts. And there's a troll on the path to get here. Did you know that? There's a troll. And a skeleton on a bridge. I don't think this real estate has much value, to be honest. Well, it has value to us. I mean, like, for materials? Like, are you going to take the pipes? Like, that would make sense. I've heard of people that do that. No. They're probably lead. We, we use this... This place has been abandoned for a long time, so we use it as we, a sort of meeting place. You couldn't, oh, you know... So, so you don't like, own it like either, it? so what are you getting mad at us for? Well, right, like... We were here first? There's well, we're here now. Yeah, I don't, are, are we fighting? Are we fighting about this? Like, I don't, no, I don't I, feel there needs to be hostility. Like, no, 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 no. There's plenty of ru ruined chalet for everyone. <laughs> right. Like, it's not, I mean, like, we don't want to stay here. But, in fact, we're already gone. Yeah. Well. I mean, we, we can, what, are, what are you doing? Well, I mean, we're, we were, investigating because you know we're we're we we're traveling we see a building in the middle of nowhere and you're like oh that's unusual i should probably go take a look at that and then you get in there and there's like ghosts and things and you know but why are you here 
Well, as I said, we use this as a sort of uh, meeting place. Uh, it, it doesn't make sense that you would be like, oh, a haunted building, that's super normal, let's hang out here, that's our new clubhouse. We prefer places that are away from prying eyes. And so you, you could have gone with a not haunted place yes, instead well, of a haunted place. Generally, like, the or hauntings... Or build like a cabin in the woods anywhere. I mean, you didn't have to pick an old... There's not even windows. Generally, the hauntings provide a, a deterrent of those who of those who would be nosy. Well, I'm going to point out that you have four reasons right here to prove that that is kind of bullshit. We did find it, and we did not. We were not deterred. I we were in he, fact deterred. I think he means we're just exceptionally brave. Yes, we are also very brave. Very well. Very brave. Very brave, yes. But, um, As it seems I don't that know what you're doing, and I uh, truthfully don't really care. Um, but I, it is weird, like, your logic does not hold up, to be honest, as to, like, nobody will come here. But here we are, here, and you're in a drafty building. Um, You've been operating out of here for years, and you're the first And now one time where you're like, mm, let's get a glazer in here to build new windows. Not once. That's... No. You didn't, you didn't wipe down the surfaces at one time? Not, or, or like, pick up the dirt? Why the kitchen was clean. If you come across a mansion in the middle of nowhere that appears to be abandoned, why, who, what normal person would decide, hmm, I'm going to go check find this a out. You could find that could do prestidigitation, and that would just, boom, done. Or mending. Like, that's Maybe, quick. But what, what, so I how would you react? None of you have magic. Is that what I'm understanding? That one of you has any magic whatsoever? In this case, you'd be correct. Ha <laughs> ha! We all do have magic. This is our house now. I see. I see. I'm not saying that last part. I'm sorry. <laughs> but <laughs> Joseph in a dick move today. Dick mood today. <laughs> what exactly are you meeting here for? If you could even say. Well, we here. And then, uh, as she's about to speak up, what and uh, you see a. A rather old, old man sort of steps forward. He's got wispy white hair and a lazy eye, and he's, he's like, "What my companion was going to tell you is, we are members of an order known as the Scarlet Sash. We seek out crossings to the shadows." and protect them from those who do evil. And we also collect those items that could do evil in order to prevent So you you protect the circle of life? That's what I'm understanding. Like you're not you're not like you're like anti necromancer, am I understanding that? We have no qualms with the practice of necromancy, unless if it is for the sake of good. But that those who practice evil, that is what we. Can I get an insight against. check? Sure, go for it. Come on, plus five, baby. Oh, come on the fuck on. <laughs> eleven. Plus yeah. five, I got eleven. <laughs> Seems to be on the up and up. Uh, it would it would appear that we are on the same page. Other than your pension for poor housekeeping, we seem to be um, aligned in our purposes. Yes. I myself. I, I would remind you. That and I will. I will formally introduce myself. I am Dolmac Algios, cleric of the Moonweaver. Well met, sir. And I will make a very formal, like grandiose gesture, like. Um, a sign of respect is kind of how I'm doing it. Well met, sir. Yes, quite. Um, and and your order protects. I I'm unclear as to what it does. You said protect from evil. That's good. Um, but what exactly does that look like? 
There are crossings into this world where the barrier is thin that divides us between that and you may have known it as the shadow fell um no no i don't i don't know what the shadow fell is i mean that's not like the hereafter right that's no it's a place of evil and shadow and uh, foul magics there are those that would seek to obtain its power, but we we strive to hold it at bay and prevent those who would seek out to delve into its evil. There is a crossing here that we protect and guard. In this room specifically, or this building? In this grounds of the building, in the graveyard for a fact. Question for the DM. Yes. Am I noticing anything different about my arcane abilities? Um, you, I'd say that you might be noticing sort of like more of a, a pull in this, in like when he's, when he brings up the shot, like as soon as he brings up the shadow fell, there's some sort of like, ping in the back of your head that's like huh like he's talking about you know shadows and stuff like that and you're like don't know what that is <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> just gonna shrink inside my helmet yeah. <laughs> okay yeah uh mop's gonna be mum <laughs> already <laughs> um well, in, in the efforts of open discourse and good faith, we, I will tell them the story about how we were given the directions to this place. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it, as well as uh, explain in detail the uh, undead horsemen. I'm going to, I'm going to, the troll I'm just going to put is like, that's just what they do. Yeah. So I'm not going to really put a lot of detail into that. But the undead, the undead horsemen, and the details of us getting there, I'm like, do you have any uh, clarification as to what this is? The undead horsemen. No, that the whole thing, like um, from from the bird giving us the manuscript all the way to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, <clears throat> Uh, he's going to, like, think about it for a little bit. He's like, the raven could be someone of our order taking an interest of you. I know nothing and thought that you should check out this place for some reason, but... what 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 is the name of your order, though? The Scarlet Sash. They're all in like black robes, and they have a scarlet sash on them. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest. Your your look does not give off an order of goodness. Black and red, typically evil colors. Just saying. Yes. Well, we Sci ourselves have of the '80s has proved that to be true. We ourselves have a penchant for or an attraction to that color of black, but... Ah, you're edgy. Got it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Sas Scarlet Chess Order of Edgelords. <laughs> yeah, so... But as, as perhaps someone from our order thought saw some of your do you tell like your whole like adventures sort of that you've like gone on up to this point sort of thing or just like the most recent events you know you know murph likes to jabber and nobody's yeah. talking so yeah. he's gonna so feel he, 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 he's like until somebody your, else said something given your previous deeds perhaps a member of our 
of our group uh, caught your attention and thought you might help yeah, with I mean, the situation. You normally, you know, I mean, I, I'm just talking to you. I can see that you're not very forthcoming with words. Does your is bird your typical communication style? Birds dropping things. Because <laughs> I would, I would in the future, if you have more things to say, to just send a person or a message. You could say that. We tend to act through ravens. They tend to go unnoticed most of the time. Mm. Unless they drop books. Yes, unless they drop books. Yeah, that was very noticeable. That was very, very noticeable. To see a bird drop books and then tell one of our people to read it. Yes, well, perhaps... That's not so subtle decided. at all. That's actually the opposite of subtle. That's muttle. Sub, 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 what, what, obvious. Yes. I don't know forward. what this member may have done. Why this member chose that method of revealing. I mean, we've had two here. jobs so far. People just popped in and were like, can you help us? We'll give you money. And we're like, yep, that's cool. And this guy's like, bird. We would have been much more... You know, I would, you do what you guys want to do. I would think, based on your history, that they thought that perhaps you could aid with the restless spirits here and help with... Oh, the... sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's like, that's one of the things that, that I'm good at. Yes. Yeah, um, and, and you picked well for that. Um, mm -hmm. Also, this guy over here, uh, Onin is a paladin as well, so he probably can help with ghosts too. Yes, well... We would, we would be most appreciative of that. Are, are we getting directions, or are you just going to say you're appreciative so and we're going to stand here in this... You never let me think, Joel. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, never I feel stop. like all of a sudden you're getting who is this Joel person that you have you thought of meditation we have a monk he can uh, teach meditation and teach you how to calm your inner spirits and your anger if you will yeah well I'm like, I'm like Gideon I'm like Gideon you need to calm just that would we'll teach you to center yourself yeah well fuck you um that's uh, that you're already causing strain on our on a burgeoning friendship. Ben Your needs a language. He needs need a churn. <laughs> Fuck. You need a churn's Korea token, like green, red on either <laughs> side, and then you just flip it green when you're willing to answer a bullshit. <laughs> red, <laughs> telling the story. Yeah, like I'm trying to like. You guys kind of like skipped a bunch, going straight up and finding the fucking people. <laughs> so, uh, implying I'm not gonna look around the house. Yeah, yeah, well, whatever. I mean, uh, we can come back if you want. I'll go out to the graveyard and just see what I can find. I can tell you that I, I sense you have already taken care of one rest, restless spirit. Another lies in the basement, and then there is the crossing in the graveyard. Uh, do you have any details about the one in the basement? Uh, um. It's a Lich King. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know that the... Lord Scott. Oh, we're switching to Grin. Yeah. From what I know of this place, the... Baron of this house uh, was drowned in the well in the basement, and his remains were laid to rest in the graveyard. As to the as to the other issue of the crossing, uh, I believe it has something to do with that of Sylphine. Um, uh, 
I'm gonna. I, I had a bunch of questions I was gonna say, but to be nice to the DM, I'm gonna just be quiet. <laughs> I mean, go for it at um, this point. No, no, it's fine. Uh, so uh, we can we can go to the basement. Very well. I we shall convene at another time. If you were willing to check out these issues. Um, sure. Um, I would uh, uh, give us a, a, a little bit to get prepared. I would like to ask if we could take a short rest. Yep. So that That's I can recover some hit points. Go for it. Yes, you may take your rest here. I'm sure from the the noise I heard in the attic earlier that you encountered quite the uh, encounter. <laughs> so they did know that happened. I mean, we heard it. <laughs> it's like, hard not. To, yeah. I mean, as as you could see, they hadn't gone up there <laughs> because <it> probably has. <laughs> <Yeah, it's true. laughs> Only a fool would go upstairs. Remember that staircase was like basically completely shrouded in cobwebs, like. Hmm. I and I kind of like look over to uh, Mop and I'm uh, like I don't fully trust these people I guess it helps that I don't fully trust anybody We'll see I'm going to come up to you two as you guys are talking and be like, these guys are completely on the level. <laughs> <laughs> you needed, you needed help. help them. You needed help ordering a drink, so I'm not going to listen to you. Um, we'll see wh exactly what they have in mind. And if it's if anything other than on the level, we have magic and they admitted that they don't. So... I don't know if I trust that either. It is a little weird. Uh, that they can I, while we're talking, can I do the ritual for detect magic? Sure. It's a okay. little. It's a little suspect that they were able to get into the chalet with no trouble, no problems, and encounter no creatures. We had to fight our way here, and they just sort of meet here. That's and if they're really here for the spirits, then why have they not interacted with any of them? If they want to keep them from getting out or being abused, why are they willy-nilly? And if, the, if they're the other way and they want to channel them, that honestly makes more sense because they're so vibrant here. They didn't assault us, so there's that. Um, you raised some good points. If... They want to send us down to the basement. Then I think we should insist that they come with us. Are they still Perhaps, like around here um, during this conversation? If they are, I'm talking in very hushed whispers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Did you guys stay in the same room with them? I, I would have liked to thought we stepped out. Yeah. But I, I think does, the ritual, right in front of them. <laughs> does the ritual show anything? I'll go back in the room and look. Does it show anything coming off of them? Of the tech magic? Yeah. What's the wording of that? For the duration, you can see the presence of magic within 30 feet of you. You sense magic this way. You can use your axe to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic. And you learn at school of magic, if any. Spell can penetrate most barriers, but is blocked by one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, and a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. Uh, da -da. So you you use that undead that you use that detect magic spell. You don't see anything. Uh, particularly magical about their persons. 
Um, but that figurine that you saw them like discussing earlier, um, you can tell that this is like a desecrated uh, figurine of some kind. What's the school? What kind of magic is surrounded? Like necromancy. Um. Okay, I'll go back and I'll say. Um. I'm like they don't. They don't seem to have any magic, but that figurine has ne an aura of necromancy, or necromantic magic on it. But they don't seem to have any. You think that they would be more in tune to necromantic energy being around them? Like, they did say that, hey, they're not, you know, they're not exactly hostile directly to necromancy, but most necromancers would be hostile to them. If that makes any sense? No, that, that makes perfect sense. Like, they're, I was surprised their whole mission seemed to be, mm -hmm. fuck the necromancers. And they're like, no, no, they're cool. There's a general consensus amongst the party that they're up to no good at this point. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, who who says they're in a secret society? Like, they just told us that. I, I never really thought of that. You know, now that you said it, who admits to just random people that they're a secret society? That's the exact opposite of how secret society members should act. You're not wrong. Hmm. Is there a chance that I could spy on them as we're sort of no showing? Like we could just sort of you guys could deliberate here and I could sort of see what they're up to. Sure. Um I'll give you guide I'll cast guidance on you. Be like, good yeah. luck. I'm gonna try to move silently and just sort of approach uh where they are. Okay. Roll me a stealth check. Here we go. We're gonna just kill them. <laughs> I just 21. got done saying we'll help them, and now I'm okay. like, we're only gonna kill them if they're totally innocent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Twenty-one okay. to sneak. Yep. They wanted to commune with the dead. Don't worry, we'll help you out in that respect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Suddenly we're found. Suddenly we're in an episode of Supernatural. We're like, what are they doing? Let's kill them. Okay. Uh, give me a perception check. Sure. Oof, that's a seven. Okay. Did you remember that you had guidance? We're gonna we're gonna do that. Mm, nine. Okay. Uh, so you don't really see uh much. But you see one of the members uh, turns into a raven and flies out through the hole in the ceiling. Well, they brought us here. After, yeah, so you see a raven fly out through the hole in the ceiling. They already uh, didn't let you us... Don't, you don't notice that figurine anymore is around. So they didn't let on to us that they that they actually called us here and were incredulous at our presence. So they're already hiding stuff from us. Are they, are they conversing amongst themselves while I'm sneaking around? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I uh, was just going to say, you, you can kind of give me another perception check. Uh, eight. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're talking, but you can't really make anything out. I think, I'll, I think at this point I'll uh, cast invisibility on myself just so I can get really close. Okay. Yeah, so you cast invisibility on yourself and come closer. Um, you can hear them talking about 
that basically you like I'm not going to role play it, but you, they're 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 not talking anything like hostile. They're just like I'm not sure who would have sent them here, but they seem to be good-hearted at least. And another one's like, ah. well, I just hope that they they are as good as they appear. <laughs> we will need them to be pure of heart for the ritual later. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sure. That's what it means. You fuck. Ah. Dun, dun, dun. We're in an '80s fantasy movie. Some woman comes in and rips her shirt open and starts chanting at a wall. I knew it. Somebody's a snake. Yeah. Also, they're obsessed with kidnapping a baby. <laughs> right. All 80s sci-fi, all 80s fantasy movies required boobs to be out and a baby to be sacrificed. And They're like, hear, we're going to go, the, go, we need boobs and babies, let's go. Uh, once you, uh, and then the one that, the, the first woman that seemed to speak for them, uh, she says, uh, she's like, well, we just have to remain vigilant and hopefully that their intentions are good. They didn't come here for, in order to use the rift. Okay. Their intentions seem pure to some extent. Um, probably you run right out to the rift, dive in. Mm. I was going to actually walk backwards extra slowly, get mm. back to the party. He's just going to mass affect the rift where he just, you know, runs right into it and just jumps in and is like, <laughs> guys, it's going to be. I red. choose synthesis. Ah. <laughs> guys, the, the rift's going to be red, green, or blue based on our decision making. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what, you're disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So that's that's what you guys, what do you guys see? Or that's what you hear, Brandon? I'm going to go back to the party and, and report this. So it seems like their uh, intentions are pure. They're just uh, afraid of us abusing the power of the rift, whatever that means. I didn't Who even know that? the rift existed. They did. Yeah, I, I mean, like... It's I'm weird. looking around. I don't see the invisible person. I'm like... No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's I'm like, amazing. I knew it. Ghost. They start swinging wildly. Do they have object permanence in your realm? No. <laughs> no, they don't. So what do you guys do? Do you tell us that they turned into birds? That one turned into a bird and flew away? Yeah, they, they absolutely know. Well, they absolutely knew that we're here because they invited us here. Um, so. but, but they said they don't have any magic, and turning into a bird, I feel like, is magic. They, they were absolutely lying to us, to some extent. Let's go back and talk to them about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I was like, Brennan, you would know enough that this would be, or Mop would know enough that this was, like, lycanthropy. Yeah. Murph wants to see their manager! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it wasn't exactly a spell as much as, as an ability, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, like a like a were raven, yeah, like those jackal wares. Just still, are they raven wares, <laughs> or or some other stupid name like that? <laughs> anyway, shouldn't we go to the basement? We did say it. Let's at least figure out what that is, and then and then go back and if they still seem fishy, we'll we'll kill them. Oh, I mean, we'll, we'll deal with them. <laughs> Kill them. Murder. Murder. If they are evil, Murder. then they shall be dealt with. I don't like that the statue is necromantic. That bothers me. They did say that, just saying, they did say that they, they take it upon themselves to take and hide evil items from people. You wouldn't notice that because you kept talking over me. I feel there's a very snarky voice in the air right now. 
a slight bit of tood. <laughs> <laughs> Cosmic judgment. Yes. I feel like the very walls of this building are judging me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the group is okay. I would like to head to the basement. Yeah, I think the basement's the best bet. I'm down. We're just going to skip all the walking between rooms and just go straight there. And all the stuff we could find. So you guys enter. I'm just going to zoom it out. <clears throat> Uh, you guys enter into the, the storage cellar, uh, where there's, there's a damp, cold, cold, damp, oddly shaped cellar with an eight foot high wooden ceiling and a flagstone floor. The walls are made of rough mortared bricks with thick cobwebs that cover crates, barrels, and old furniture stacked against the north wall. To the south are a pair of closed wooden doors and the door furthest from you swings open on rusty hinges and beyond it, you see a smaller, almost sepulchral chamber. Um, the change in air pressure when you guys come in, uh, you hear a whisper coming from the direction of that chamber. Can I get... What's everyone's passive wisdom? Uh, passive wis my uh, passive wisdom is 15. Okay. Or passive wisdom or passive perception? Perception, sorry. Oh, uh, 13. Yeah, 14. 12. Uh, one moment, please. Uh, my passive perception is 16. Okay. Everyone with a 14 or higher, um, you hear the, what sounds like a man whispering. <laughs> I can't get out. And uh, but everyone else, it it sound it's unintelligible. I move to where the voice is. Okay. So you enter the 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 well. Uh, room where there's the only feature of this damp, cold room is a four foot diameter well in the middle of the floor. And next to the shaft, there's a wooden bucket fastened to a coiled length of rope. The bottom of the shaft is uh, veiled in darkness. And as you enter the room, you can hear a whispering voice saying, Brorn, where are you, boy? Hello, is someone stuck down there? You just hear the just a repeat of the same Brorn, where are you? Perhaps we should masquerade as who he's asking for. I take the rope uh, that's all coiled up and I just throw it down the well. Okay. I mean, not the whole rope, obviously. I have one yeah. end of it, but like... Yeah, you're going to secure it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tosses it down. <laughs> yeah. Are you going down, or...? No, I'm, like, just throwing it down there and yelling, Grab the rope! Nothing happens. So, if I, like, peer down there... I have uh, 60 feet of dark vision. Do I see anything within that range? Uh, you can... Yeah, so if you look down... You said 60 feet? I believe so. Okay. Yeah, you can see that there's, yeah. like, uh, you know, water down there, but you can see, like, a glint of gold down in the bottom. Okay. This person might be old. They might need some assistance getting up. Should I try to assist them up? Wow. 
Probably you or me. We're probably the only people who could carry it. Perhaps do we want to have a conversation with whatever that is before we do it? Wait, are they not down there? They might be. They might be a specter. They might be something they're not. But they're trying to start a conversation. Perhaps we should have one. Hmm. I don't think that they're actually trying to start a conversation. Hello down there. You just say, uh, you just hear just the same repeated phrase again. Yeah, no. I don't think there's much conversation here. I'm gonna... Nothing happened. Nope. So, um, um, perhaps one of us should go down. I shall go down. I, I would go with you if you would like. If, if this is a ghost, that would be more my thing. Shall we go together? No, we don't know how frayed this rope is yet. Let me go down, and if I make it down safely, then you follow me down. Okay. Um, I, I have rope too. I I do not, but that is very sound. Okay. I'll proceed down the rope. Okay. Uh, can I get an athletics check? Yes, you may. Test camera. Camera. That's out of the thing. <laughs> Overshoot. Okay. So uh, that is a total of thirteen. Yeah. Uh, you're able to, with the especially with the help of the rope, you're able to sort of uh, scale down to the bottom of the shaft fairly easily. Uh, you don't have any trouble at all. So, and so there looks like there's sort of a cistern at the bottom. Uh, you don't see anything other than, um, sort of like glint of gold at the bottom of the cistern. All right. May I, well, how much room is down here exactly? Is it so like enough about, room for two people? It's 10 feet wide or 10 feet in diameter. Sorry. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit tight. It'd be cramped. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to shout up to my compatriots and tell them that I made it down safely. Uh, but I'm going to insist that uh, Murph wait a moment. Uh, I'm going are, to... there, are there remains down there? I shall check to see the glint of gold. Do I find anything down here in the uh, cistern? So you don't find any more remains, but you do find a locket. That's uh, a, but on one side it's, uh, on the front of it, it's got a holy symbol of soon. And then it's, it contains a tiny portrait of a woman. Okay. I will yell up to my compatriots what I have found. Which you wouldn't know that. Which god? I don't really know much about. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't know what god it's dedicated to, but it's uh, you'd just see like a sort of, it looks like what a holy symbol of some kind. What does the holy symbol look like? Fucking no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta bust your balls a little bit every now and again. Uh, let's see. So this, it looks like the face of a woman with her hair sort of like splayed out around her. They're not in blades, are they? No. <laughs> splayed. Like yeah, sort of like I know. Her hair, I like the Joel got no, that not one. Knives. <laughs> not knives. Not knives. <laughs> But it's sort of like yeah. her curling like hair like around her like she's Okay. Well. Um 
kann. I guess I'll start heading back up the rope then. Mm-hmm. Yep, you make it up. Uh, I guess you could give me another athletics check to see if you have any trouble getting back up. <laughs> sure, why not? Test camera. Oh, even better than before, so there we go. Yeah, you're like, That's a, you're like this is easy. You're like... 22. I don't even use a rope. I just like... Yeah, you, just, you just like rock climb up. You're like, ropes are for squares. <laughs> Fucking ninja guiding this shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's, cause it's getting... You're like, you're like wall jump your way up to the top. <laughs> like It's like Naruto. It's like... Yeah. I just jump out and I'm all like, I'm a ninja, believe it, believe it. Uh, and everyone's like, no, no, you are fucking not. No. Go home. Go home, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So you found this holy symbol uh, with a portrait of a woman in it that doubles as like a locket. Uh, and that's it. Well... There you go, Murf. Um. Thank you. Can I can I inspect it to see if there's anything like anything coming from it? Yeah. Like so you, magic? I would say, uh, would you say Murph would have studied like the rest of like the Pantheon? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's part of. Yeah. It. So Not you me. could look right at this and you see that's a holy symbol uh, dedicated to Soon, who's the god of love and beauty. So it's like, um, like a token you give to like a loved one or something. It's like a locket that someone would have. It's like, uh, you know, it's dedicated to this man's, presumably this man's love for his wife. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like one of those like card lockets and stuff. So that that essentially, okay. Um, this this looks like it's a picture of, I would assume somebody he cares for. Hey, Will, I think your mic's doing something. Never mind, it stopped. We're good. <laughs> there's like a weird like rustling noise um yeah so you I got distracted sorry what did you say Joel I um I'm like I, I this appears to be this is a, a, a amulet of soon um you give them to somebody you care about so I would assume this woman has some importance to him mm-hmm. if, if, if it's the, you know, belongs to whomever the Baron. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say, Joel, with your study of undead, uh, give me a religion check if you're proficient. Well, he does that, uh, DM, Natural didn't 20. we? Okay. Uh, you know that this is probably like what sort of tying this spirit here. Uh, you're. Like obviously, so there's no remains in the bottom of this well. There's this is something that's like tying it there. So perhaps, if you returned it, it might put that spirit to rest. Okay. Um, I will Especially relay with a this. natural twenty. <laughs> I will relay this to the group. Um, perhaps if we return this <clears throat> to the Baron's remains, it might help his spirit to rest. Um, DM. I will attempt the ritual of gentle repose, but it won't do anything because I need to There's touch no it. There's no remains, yeah. Yeah, but I will still attempt it. Yeah. Okay. Didn't we read that the Baron was kind of a bad dude? No. In the diary that we had? No, uh, you, you read that the Baron, from, from everything that you could tell... Uh, the Baron, it, it almost is more like he, this family fell to like bad circumstances. So from okay. the diary, you learned that the Baron basically had a love of hunting, but he was very dedicated to his wife and family, but both of their daughters died young. One was disfigured. The other died in a hunting accident that the wife never truly like 
forgave him for. There's nothing, okay. but there's nothing to indicate that he was a bad man. You know, from from All what right. you can tell, like the 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 only reason that the 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 Baroness sort of like stuck around in this area where she, because she's more of like a city gal, was because of her his love for her love for him and vice versa. Okay. Yeah, right, I should we take? Baron was a bad dude too. Should we take our first break? Uh, yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Um, from before the break, you guys just found the locket and Murph or figured out that if you probably return the locket to the Baron, that it will put his spirit to rest. Yes. What do you guys do? Well then, do we know where to take this locket? Um, they they said something was going on in the graveyard, and I think we could start there, or we could go ask them directly. I think it's best if we go ask our new friends to accompany us to the graveyard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I agree. Yep. Graveyard's the first place to look for bodies. And if their intentions are pure, then they will help us out in this task. Um, I'm going to follow up to, where, where are we, second floor? Is that where they're at? Yeah. All right. Second floor! <clears throat> so, um, uh, we we found a locket in the bay in the basement, and there was just a voice. We didn't find anything else. I see. Um, I will show them the locket. Hmm. Interesting. I I think it's it's if we return it to the Baron, his he might move on that I'm sure that someone of your uh, abilities knows better than I that would make sense I believe he's buried in the graveyard um, you want to show us where that is sure I can accompany you I look over at uh, Garrett. I'm like, <laughs> like <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So um, you guys gonna go to the graveyard or? Yeah, I, I will. I mean, if everybody else is cool, I'll go. So. Well, well, Garrett's like, ooh. I feel like that's the background music. Oh, my ding ding dong. <laughs> I feel like that's just your music accompaniment every time you do anything. It's just that little harpsichord music kicks on. Oh, you touch my tra la la. And alignment change. <laughs> I'm now chaotic sexy. <laughs> Man, he's also a bard. I didn't it? see any of this happen. It's the only. It's the only uh, alignment with a charisma requirement, mm -hmm. and a girth requirement. That was. <laughs> Gotta have good con for the stamina. Yeah, so, there you go. You guys, workable. You guys come to the graveyard. Prestige class. We're doing D and D one, guys. So you know, there's <laughs> a seven foot tall wrought iron fence, which encloses a small graveyard south of the chalet. Set in the north side of the enclosure is a gate with the name Brantifax worked into an arch above it. In the yard are four graves, each marked with an engraved headstone. I, I have no more eyes of the grave, so... Yep. Mop, did you happen to keep that dolly?
it's not exactly 100% structurally, uh, but it is written in my inventory. <laughs> Forgot you took one. I have dolls. a funny feeling that if we return the dolly to the grave, we might put that soul at rest too. See, that's what I was thinking when we were fighting it. But then I set it out of fire. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try this uh, method. Uh, I'm also going to divine sense now that we're out there. And uh, what does divine sense do? Uh, until the end of my turn, I can sense anything affected by the hollowed spell and know the location of any celestial fiend undead within 60 feet that is not behind total cover. Yeah, you don't mm -hmm. sense anything. Okay. Uh, you can see that. Is anyone going to look at the headstones or anything? Or um, I is it? Oh, you said it was. I was going to go check it. It open, but I'm assuming we just walk in because you said. Yeah, there's. It's not okay. locked iron gate. It's just. Okay, I thought it was gate. a locked iron. Gate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I will read the headstones. Uh, uh, what time of day is it? Real quick, quickly. Fuck! I don't know. Uh, it's as, evening. I, oh shit! I was like, as long as it's not night time. <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's creepiest night. time of night, midnight. Yeah. <laughs> we need, we it's need to act. Moon. We need to act quickly. Yeah. What uh, a terrible so, night to have a curse. So from top to bottom on the map, Simon's uh, Quest. Uh, you see a uh, Baron Brantifax, husband, father, hunter. Let no man stand above another. Uh, on oh, this... shit. <laughs> Brorn, hound of Brantifax, faithful to the end. Uh, then the third one, Haluth, our pride and joy, lost too soon. And then Sophine, beloved daughter, may she find peace at last. Well, we, we have an idea of where to put the doll and where to put the symbol. How do we do this, Murph? You're the expert. And you've you somehow... <laughs> does, does he, he, have he too has learned invisibility. <laughs> does Murph have a shovel? Because there what, wasn't... Weren't there digging tools in the uh, entrance to the chalet? There was a shovel in the in the coat room, yes. Uh, the coat I remember room, that. Yes. I remember that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go hike back to the chalet to get the shovel. There are multiple shovels. There's two. <laughs> Dual wield shovels. Yeah. Okay. So Murph, can we just lay the items on the gravestone, or do we need to dig them up? I've I've never done this before. I will try laying it on the gravestone first. Not on the gravestone, on the grave. Like. I mean, the remains are probably going to want to hold the stuff, right? Mm. So it doesn't work? We just no, laying it nothing, on top? No, nothing happens. I'm going to dig a small hole and then bury it like I'm like a child burying a seed. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't work. Uh, I would think that we're going to need to dig Ex them up. Dig zoom. Onan takes a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> um, I too will take a shovel I don't want to presume but the dwarf is probably really good at diggy diggy hole we have a dwarf <laughs> I'm sure there are some dwarves who are bad at digging I mean I'm <laughs> just, I don't know, <laughs> pretty sus man <laughs> what do you say Oin would you like to uh, gauge in a friendly Bit of competition. I dig this grave, you dig that one. First one down. Yes. Uh, which grave are you digging? Uh, I'm the taking Baron. the little girl grave. Okay. Uh, I got the Baron. Sylphine or Heluth? Or whatever. Uh, the one whose dolly we have. Sylphine, I believe. Okay. Yep. So, athletics check, then? 
Uh, well, I don't think you need to check for this. You're just digging a hole. Well, I want to see uh, who gets there down there faster. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's give it a uh, yeah, athletics. Uh, I'm going to channel divinity for peerless athlete. <laughs> um, I too am going to do something really cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a second. That's a good question. Dungeon Master, I want to know something. Okay. Can I use my key ability for uh, my Furio Blows to just like continuously, furiously like dig? <laughs> Hmm. I feel like f flurry of blows is more like a you know you'd be punching the dirt, but I don't know is a shovel like a monk weapon because it's kind of like you know a quarter think, staff with just something at the end of it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna say I don't think you have proficiency in shovel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll I'll go regular. With it. <laughs> only only shovel knight has proficiency. <laughs> yeah, shovel knight. Also a great game, by the way. <laughs> oh fuck. Okay. Uh oh. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Wait, basically. Hold like... on. I want, I want the total. Uh, twenty-two. <laughs> yeah, like you start like really really going at it at Murphy. Eleven. Yeah, you start like really going, like you're you're going, like you're digging a hole pretty fast. But then you like look over, and then like Onin's like head is already like below like ground level. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, huh? Okay. So you guys both unearth uh, the Baron's, uh, like Mop, I feel you were right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just I just read a lot of stories. I like digging well. holes. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you guys both uh, unearth the coffins uh, of the Baron and the Sophine. Um, uh, and you notice that the were even dude is uh, his name is Taspars. Yes, you. That is where he's going to point to Sophine's grave and say, that is where the crossing lies. Crossing like a rift or something? Some may call it a rift, yes. It is a crossing into the plane of shadows, into the shadow fell itself. It has beginning been getting stronger of late. Um, All of a sudden, I don't want to be standing down here in this hole. Uh, you won't be able to just cross over just by standing in it. But if you lay down in the in the grave, uh, you will pass over. Don't do that. What I'm going to need is some tennis balls, a marker... And I'm going to need a lot of rope. Gideon doesn't want his SUV to hit the back wall of his garage. You see. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I have, have parchment no? okay. and ink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold it. <laughs> <laughs> I have parchment and ink, but I don't have any rope. Well, you've Anyways, ruined, uh, you've ruined the meme. Yes. <laughs> No, no. Oh, we, we, this was this was a another thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna go open up the Baron's thing and drop the the uh, locket. Yeah. So yes. as soon as you return the locket, uh, you hear sort of like a like on the wind. You hear who has disturbed my rest. No, you hear. Thousand years, I'm finally free. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time to conquer Earth. <laughs> uh, you hear, uh, like a like on the wind, you hear a thank you, 
And all of you now have uh, gained a charm of heroism for putting the Baron to rest. Is that uh, a physical thing, or...? Uh, I don't think it's a physical thing. Oh. Knocked over the oh, the ship. Where is that located? It's worth two thousand platinum. Fantastic. Most important thing we need to know about objects: how much are they worth? <laughs> and we sell. Oh, for a second there, I was like, "You does it blend?" And I was like, oh, "Okay, <laughs> don't." <breathe> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <clears throat> Will it blend? <laughs> remember I'm when, sorry. Remember when back in the day when they put uh, iPods in there? Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't remember those days. It, it it looked like it had been reduced back to silicon. It was just like, <laughs> like pencil graphite. What the heck is it? Well, it blend is so old. They had Chuck Norris. I know, in. right? They put Chuck I'm Norris showing in, my age. <laughs> and, then and then, like the Willet blend broke, and then the Chuck Norris action figure was unharmed. <laughs> it says it disappears. After use, yeah. It's so I think it is a physical item. token. Yeah, well, that's so. the that's the power of of the blender for sure. Sorry, that I... is how blenders work. Is it perhaps in the back of the Candle Keep Mysteries book? As in, like, is it it's, per no, it's perhaps in, it's an a, item? It's in the DMG. Okay. It's under supernatural. Books. Um. I feel like I'm going to investigate anything else. Like, uh, should, should we, uh, are there other graves? There's, there's four, yeah, right? So, uh, Gideon unearthed, uh, what Taskbar said is the, uh, crossing, this, the crossing over point. That's the white, Shadow. right? No, it's the, 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 the daughter that was, died young and was disfigured and may have been um the 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 wife may have had a hand in it to like relieve the, the girl's suffering. Hand me the dolly. Wow. It just says this this charm allows you to give yourself the benefit of a potion of heroism as an action disappears after you use it. Um. Uh, so you put the dolly in the thing. I, I do. Get, yeah, I get to get in. Yeah. So you put the doll in the thing, and the rift opens wider. Got it. <laughs> Gideon disappears. Rift permanently closes. That's what I was. That's what I should say. But no. It, um, but no. Uh, nothing really happens. But he said, like Taspar said, he, he said yes. You've tried that. The as I said, the crossing has only become more uh, has manifested more as of late. You say you've tried this. Exactly what have you tried? This sort of information seems like it would be relevant. Well, from what we can tell, there is a... Because we got this dolly up in the girls' room, and this doesn't... Okay, it doesn't I seem like you were off up the top there. Of, I talked off the top of my head. That's wrong. <laughs> That I makes it up. all the better. I lay down on the the crypt. <laughs> ben, Ben, you're supposed to do this and go, I'm right. <laughs> uh, I take him and I lay him down in the crypt. I see what happens. Right. <laughs> we all stack up onto the crypt and are off to the Shadowfell. Yep. You guys cross over to the Shadowfell. Ah! <laughs> all right. All right. You what am I looking at that? the Shadowfell? All right. It's like the upside down. No, that's a statue. 
so you enter into the Shadowfell. Holy shit, we actually do this great! <laughs> uh, oh, no. What oh, you no. see ahead of you is a mausoleum. I enter the mausoleum. Okay. Uh, um, I will. I will follow as well. Same. Guess I go last. Uh, okay. I feel heroism bubbling up inside of me. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Mop, if you ever want me to take the rear, just let me know. I can see that being important in some cases, yeah. Okay. Uh, as you enter, you see that what looks like a disturbed... Hold on. Um, as you guys enter the shadow... Enter into the mausoleum. Uh, you hear the sounds of undead. Uh, and ghouls rise up out of open graves around you. And roll for initiative, motherfuckers! How many? Uh... Right now, four. I my initiative is a five. Mm -hmm. My initiative is also a five. <laughs> You're looking at a twenty. Okay. So, what was yours, Onan? Eleven. All right, uh, Gideon, you're up first. Okay. So, um, there are four undead? Yes. Uh, can you describe them to me? Uh, I would need the monster manual to better describe them. You see, while I try to just, you know, get a feel of how they are, I just start, like, rhythmically, like, moving my shoulder sort of thing. And hopefully, like, I'll just, like, raise up and... All right. <laughs> <laughs> See if they start dancing with me. You see. Uh, I would like to join him in this attempt. You see basically these clawed uh, undead. They have sickly skin. They're on sort of all, f all fours as they sort of see you and uh, like uh, dial in on your location. Uh they, they've got long claws and uh, what looks like well, probably would it probably be might be a nasty bite if they get close. Um, Joel uh, Murph would know that these are ghouls. Okay. Does our attempt to engage them in the thriller dance come to any fruition? I was not paying attention because I was looking at my book. Uh, right. Well, I got a twenty-one for performance. <laughs> are they, dancing with me? they are not dancing. They look hungry. Okay, then they're less fun than I thought they were. Um, <laughs> I'm going to need more dancers, quick! Odin, get to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's uh, your turn first. There. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to look to, or uh, just before I do anything. I'm going to shout back uh, to Murph, and I'll be like, anything I should know about these? Um, yes, hit them very hard, and don't let them bite or scratch you. 
Got it. And I will rush up to, well, well, let's see here. I don't know if I want to rush into them. Uh, yeah, sure. Actually, I'll rush into them. And I will whack the closest one with my order staff real fast. And then uh, while I'm kind of like surrounded by them sort of thing, um, I will then spend a key point to use my bonus action to take the dodge action on my turn. Okay. So, so you're just going to take some cracks at the first ghoul you encounter? I'm going to crack one ghoul once and then take the dodge action because I can't also use my <coughs> uh, unarmed strike if I'm, you know, using my bonus action for the dodge. Mm -hmm. So, here we go. Uh, how does a 15 treat you? That's going to hit. Okay. Uh, it's only uh, four points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Actually, now shit, I've already said that what I was going to do. Never mind. I was about to say, like... Sorry? For your bonus action. No, I was uh, attacking with one hand uh, because I was thinking about, like, I could have attacked with two hands and then increased the damage die, but I did not, so... Okay. That was my mistake. That is your mistake. All right. Uh, that is one of the ghoul's turn. Who has? Who, you said four points, by the way. Four points bludgeoning. Correct. Okay. Uh, non magical. Okay. And the uh, the ghoul that you just engaged with is going to attempt. To strike at thee um, with his claws. Very good. Uh, does a fourteen hit? No. Okay. The the ghoul slashes at you and misses. Um, and then, but then the second one is going to attempt to hit you. He's trying to try, going to try to bite and does a twenty one hit. Uh, he also has disadvantage because of my dodge action. Oh shoot. Does a 17 hit you? Just hits, yes. Okay. The other one, uh, yeah, would, wouldn't have hit. Still. Uh, so, okay, so he bites into you for uh, eight points of piercing damage. Okay. And is any of this damage necrotic? No. Okay. Piercing. And you said eight points? Yes. Okay. And that is turn to Onan. So Gideon ran up, right? Yep. Uh, Onan's just literally just going to do the same and start hammering away at one with the shield. Okay. Uh, no. Was a, or a, well, probably not. That's a nine. That's not gonna do it. Yeah. Can you do anything with your bonus? Uh, not this round. Okay. Uh, so the ghoul that you just tried to take a swing at, or were you trying to hit the one that uh, Gideon hit? Probably a different one. Okay. The one that you just took a swing at is going to try and claw at you. Uh, four is uh, six is not going to do it. So that is turn to uh, Joel. You're up next. Gideon or Murph. All right. The uh, one of the one that Gideon had attacked. I need mm -hmm. a wisdom saving throw from him. Ten. Ten? Ten. He's going to take seven points of damage as I use Toll the Dead on him. Okay. 
Okay. Um, and then as my bonus action, I am going to summon my spiritual weapon. All right. Uh, okay, that is Murph's turn. That was Murph. Sorry. Mop. Mop's turn. Uh, ranged spell attack. Okay. Uh, I'm getting started. I'm going to try a witch bolt. Okay. Oof. It's a seven to hit. Alright. Uh, that's not going to do it. Uh, that's the fourth and final ghoul's turn. Uh, he's going to attack at Gideon. Uh, for, and I guess it's disadvantage still, right? Because you took the dodge. That is correct. Until the end of the turn. Or until the beginning of my turn, I should say. Uh, does a 15 hit? No. Okay. Yeah, they it tries to take a claw attack at you and misses. Uh, that is right around back up to the top with you, Gideon. Okay. Um, I, I am still surrounded by the four of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do the same action as before. But this time I'm going to remember to do it two-handed, and I'm still going to use the dodge action for the bonus using my key point. Okay. Okay, that's 21. Gonna, that's going to hit. Yay. Yeah, that's not better. Okay. So uh, that is seven points damage this time. Okay. Bludgeoning. That's my turn. All right. Uh, now it's the ghouls. Uh, the one is going to still try and claw at you that you've been attacking. It's not going to hit. The other one is also still going to try and attack you. Uh, it's also not going to hit. Uh, onion. Going to take a swing at the undead. That means a thirteen to hit. That's gonna hit. Cool. Oh, wow. It's a damage. How much? Five. Piercing. Okay. Uh, next up is the ghoul you just hit. He's going to attack, swing at you with his claw attack. Uh, 14 hit. And that will miss. Okay. Uh, that's turn around to Murph. Um... Is are they in a are all of us in like a clump? Uh, no. So you guys were approaching the mausoleum, and before you could get to it, these ghouls popped up. <clears throat> um, are we trying to get inside, or is or no? Like, do we want to fight them off or get inside? Uh. I'm asking the group. Oh. I feel like if we get inside... We Little busy! <laughs> if we get inside, we might start a second encounter. Right. Um, <clears throat> then I am going to go after the one closest to me with my flail. 21. That'll hit. Six points of damage. Okay. Yeah, and then attacking the one that uh, <coughs> that onion was fighting, or a different one. Which one did I do? Told the dead on. Uh, the one th that Brian was attacking. 
Uh, that one. All right. Uh, that one's down onto... Is it dead? It's dead. You're dead. All right, and then I'm going to direct my spiritual weapon towards the one uh, Onan is fighting. Uh, that is only a 10. It's not going to hit. Okay. That is it. That is my turn. Okay. Uh... Uh, so, uh, that is Mop's turn. We're going to go for a, another ranged uh, spell attack. We'll go with Firebolt on uh, Gideon's target. That's a 19. That's going to hit. Well, Gideon's target was dead, so you'd need to fire at Onan's or the right. other ghoul that was attacking Gideon. Onan's target. So okay. we'll go to the next one in melee. Yeah. And how, what was the damage? 10 damage. Ooh. Ooh. You smack this ghoul with a firebolt, and he's like, Bruh. And then it is the fourth ghoul's turn, who's going to take a swing at Murph uh, with his claw attack. Gosh. Five to hit, so no, that's gonna do nothing. So that is turn around to Gideon. Okay, um, I'm going to focus on another target. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm just going to go full attack then. Okay. Uh, bare minimum would be uh, an 18, so. That'll hit. Okay. So. Okay. So you're looking at, let's see, this is four, seven, so 11 points of damage. Oh, man. Uh, was that the, was this the new one or? New one. Okay. So 11. Yep. You smacked the one hard. Uh, and then that is going to be the ghoul's turn that you just hit, uh, that Murph just hit. Uh, he's gonna try and swing at you, Gideon. Uh, it doesn't have disadvantage this time. 16? No. Damn. Okay, uh, that's turn to Onion. Alright. And I still got the one in front of me, right? Yep. I'm gonna hit him. Or try to. Uh, that's a dirty 20 to hit. That is, that's gonna hit. Oh, yeah. Damage. Oh. Four points of damage. Four. Okay. Uh, that is the ghoul you just hit's turn. He's got a claws. 15s or not 15 17 is gonna do it or no uh on me yes uh nope got 18 damn all right and then that is murph's turn i need a wisdom saving throw on the one that was just fighting uh onin four Perfect. He's going to take three points of damage as I hit use Toll the Dead. Uh, how do you kill it? Um, I am just going to have this uh, like spectral bell appear right next to it and just ring. Mm -hmm. And as it does, it's going to like, like its head's yeah. going to explode. 
<laughs> very cartoon and over the top <laughs> anime, unnecessary. <laughs> All right, uh, Mop, turn to you. I have I have a bonus action. Oh, you have your bonus. Sorry. I uh, the remaining one I would like to guide my spiritual weapon over to it. Um, the undamaged it, one or the one? Uh, that, there's one. There's two more. There's two left. I thought there. I thought we killed two. Okay. Um, that is a fourteen. That's gonna hit. All right. Um, six points of damage. All right. Are you attacking the damaged one or the undamaged one? Uh, I will attack the damaged one. Okay. Uh, Mop, turn to you. All right. Yeah. So on um, on Merce target. Uh, rain spell attack. I'm gonna cast um, our bolt again. Okay. Twenty one to hit. That's gonna hit. A lowly four damage. All right. How do you kill it? I guess you just um, blast in the face with a firebolt. I'm going to the firebolt as it like turns to rush towards me and so its mouth is kind of like ah. and I'm going to fling the fireball right in its mouth and it's going to close around it and then it's going to like sizzle and pop as it like cooks its head from the inside <laughs> out nice I like it and All then right. like as the skin pops off like the skull just like falls forward off of it and the headless body collapses yeah and we're done alright uh, that one is going to attack at Murph the, the remaining one is going to attack at Murph and with a... Does a 15 hit? It does not. Ah. Well, poop. Uh, one attack will hit, one attack will miss, so I'm going to assume that that one attack that misses is going to be the f uh, uh, staff. So I'll hit with the fist and do six points damage. Okay. Okay. Uh, hold on. All right. That is turn to Onan. To swing. Helps if I actually throw it in the thing. That's uh, 14 total. It'll do it. Four or five points of damage. Okay, little hit. Alright. Uh, Giddy. And that's er, gonna be Murph, turn to you, sorry. Alright. Um... Again, I would like a wisdom saving throw. And this guy's been damaged, right? Yes. Good. It's a 12. All right. Uh, that is five points of damage for Toll the Dead. Okay. And then I am going to direct my spiritual weapon, uh, which is 17. Okay. Okay. For six points of damage. It's just what you needed. How do you kill this one? Um, the weapon is in the shape of like a mace. Mm -hmm. So it's just gonna the bell is gonna ring and then the little clapper is gonna slide out of it and just bash it right in the head. <laughs> like as I kind of and it crumples right to the ground. Is that the last one? That is the last one. But as you take down the final ghoul you see a figure clad in armor with all of its flesh bleached white looking down on you standing on top of the mausoleum and as the two statues on either side of it flare their wings out that's where we'll end our session <laughs> 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 
All right, so we get to take a long rest, is what I'm understanding. <laughs> Does it sound like a long rest? <laughs> so I get a long rest. So we get a long rest right now? Yeah. No, not at all. You do not get a long rest. You're about to face boss time. <laughs> hit level all right, long yeah, rest it is. <laughs> all right, thanks everybody for watching. It's been a good. Uh, Good session. Again, uh, if you're planning on joining us for Book Talk, join us on Tuesday where we'll be uh, discussing The Foundation by Isaac Asimov. And then the following Saturday, which is November 5th, we will be uh, having a long, longer session than normal where we'll be playing Call of Cthulhu, uh, which will be done by our keeper, Brian, uh, along with alongside original GM. Uh, again, you can catch us on every Wednesday where we play Dungeons and Dragons. And thanks everyone, and we'll see you again next week.